Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to you, and may it honor and glorify God in His kingdom. In this video, I'm actually going to be discussing two very different topics. One uh, will deal with uh, the mark of the beast, but I hope you will stay with me, that you will bear with me, because I believe I will be presenting uh, a, a take or information, if you will, that I doubt you have heard before. So hopefully you will find uh, what I had to say intriguing. The other topic has to do with my brothers and sisters in Christ who I believe fear teaching something that their friends may find offensive. Teaching something that you may believe in your heart but you fear saying so. You fear teaching really what you believe because of the reaction that may come from uh, your real family members or perhaps from friends, from your co-workers and from uh, people in the YouTube community. Perhaps you are afraid that if you speak on a particular topic and stress what it is you really believe that you will lose uh, subscribers, that you will lose friends on YouTube. Well, it's my hope here I can convince you that that's actually not such a bad thing that when you see your subscriber base going down that's not that's not a bad thing in fact it's a very good thing uh, when you understand why it happens a lot of people think that if they teach on a particular matter that people are going to reject them well if that's the case then that's great let it happen because What's actually happening is the dead wood is being trimmed from your channel. Dead wood is destructive. Dead wood will keep you down. Dead wood, it drains the life from those branches that are still alive. So allow God to do this. Allow God to trim your YouTube ministry of the dead wood. And you can do this by simply speaking the truth, speaking what God guides you to speak on. Allow God to work in your heart and your mind. Allow Him to guide you in the kinds of videos that you should be making and the things you should be teaching. And if you do this, there's a very good chance that your teachings will be difficult for some to understand, for some to accept, and they will leave you. But that is simply your channel being, being trimmed of dead wood. And whether it's in the, or on the YouTube community regarding your channel, or whether it's in your actual life where God uh, is trimming that branch that is your life, taking the dead wood out of your life, even though it may be painful in the beginning, God will also transplant others onto your vine. He will bring others into your life that will bring life to you rather than draining it. But we must allow God to do this. And as long as we are obeying God, as long as we are being true to what He places on our hearts, that is what will happen. All right, uh, I'm going to, I guess, explain the, uh, the passage that I believe supports this. This is something I think of every time I see my subscriber base going down. I reflect and I remember this teaching of Jesus, this story of how his disciples reacted to something that he taught. It's in John chapter 6 and I'm going to begin by reading from verse 40. For it is my Father's will that all who see His Son and believe in Him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because He had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know His father and mother. How can He say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, Stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me and at the last day I will raise them up. 
as it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from Him comes to me. Okay, I just want to stop here. It says here, they will all be taught by God. Well, we know that Jesus is the Son of God and actually is God. So when we learn from Jesus and when they were learning from Jesus, they were actually being taught by God. Uh, verse 46, uh, not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who was sent from God have seen him. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. Actually, I'm going to skip on a bit uh, to verse 52. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person at the last day. Okay, I just want to skip on again. Uh, I believe you're getting, I hope you are getting the, the gist of my, uh, uh, my teaching here as, as I come up to it. Uh, verse 61, Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining, so he said to them, Does this offend you? Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, That is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. I want to repeat that. You have the words that give eternal life. So it's not enough that we just believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We also must believe that it is His words that give us eternal life. I'd also like to take a moment here uh, and just talk a bit about a, a parable that Jesus taught. It has to do with the two sons who, when their father came to them, asked them to go into the field and work. Well, the one said to the father, yes, I will. The other said, no, I won't. But then the one who said he would go into the field and work didn't. And the one who said he wouldn't ended up going into the field and doing what his father asked. Jesus then asked, which of these actually obeyed their father? Well, the answer, of course, is the one who first said no, but then went and done it. And the one who said yes, said yes to his father, but didn't follow his commands. Well, they weren't obeying the father. And that's what happens when people confess Jesus as their Lord, but they choose to live as they please. They choose not to follow His commands and His teachings, His words that give eternal life. As Jesus said back here, and I'm going to read it again, as it is written in the Scriptures, they will all be taught by God. So anyone who reads what Jesus teaches, they are being taught by God. But those who choose to ignore his, his teachings, choose to live their way rather than His way, well, they may be confessing Him as their Lord, but they aren't living like they believe it. They, therefore, are not true believers. And they are, in fact, turning their back on Christ. Just as the one son turned his back on his father when he said, Yes, Father, I will, but then didn't, so too are Christians who confess Jesus as their Lord but don't obey His commandments. They are turning their back on Him. In the very same way that these disciples who turned their back and walked away from Jesus. So keep this in mind. There, are, there were many disciples with Jesus at this time. But when He taught something difficult, they ended up 
leaving him. They wouldn't accept it. They said, no more. We like what you had to say for a while, but now what you're saying, no, we can't accept it. Well, that's exactly what we see happen on YouTube. It's what many Christians will see regarding their YouTube channel. You'll have people that will watch one or two of your videos and say, I like what he has to say, and they'll subscribe to you. Then they'll watch a video of yours that gives a difficult teaching, that it goes against what they presently believe, and they will turn their back on you. But we can't be afraid of losing such people. We can't be afraid that people will turn their back on us and leave. Jesus wasn't afraid of it. Jesus didn't go chasing after these disciples that left him and said, Hey, wait, 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 you, you simply don't understand what I'm saying. No, Jesus simply let them go. And that's what we must be willing to do. My brothers and sisters, we can't be afraid of losing subscribers. We can't be afraid of being attacked by people because they don't like what we have to say. We cannot fear such things. In fact, we should rejoice when our subscriber base is lowered, when we see the numbers dropping, because it is God ridding our channel of dead wood, ridding our channel of those people who are actually draining the life from our ministry. So allow them to go, and don't be afraid of teaching something difficult. Don't be afraid of teaching something that may result in people leaving you, or in attacking you. It's exactly what we are told will happen if we are being a true witness of Christ and teaching a golden gospel. All right, uh, I hope, uh, it's my intention, that what I've talked about is going to edify my brothers and sisters, that if you've had trepidation, if you've been afraid of teaching of certain things that God has placed on your heart, it's my hope that you will be encouraged to do what God has placed on your heart. Now, regarding the beast, the Antichrist, and what the number of the beast. In the book of Revelation, John the Apostle is given this great vision. And part of that vision, in it, he is told that the mark of the beast is 666. So, what I'd like to do is draw your attention to two passages in the Bible. For there are only two books in the Bible that actually have a chapter 6 and verse 66. One in the Old Testament, one in the New. And God would have it that the, the book in the New Testament that has this passage is John, chapter 6, verse 66, which I actually already read. And so I'm going to read that verse again. Um, At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Now, I believe this is significant, that John is the one who is given the revelation, and then one of only two books in the Bible that has a passage with these numbers in it, 666, being chapter 6, verse 66. One of the two is found in the gospel that is written by John himself. So we have the book of Revelation written by John and the gospel written by John, and we see this connection with this number. And what he's, what we are seeing here is it's talking about the disciples leaving, believers leaving in mass. We, we see in this path, or in chapter 6, that a lot of the disciples left, and he, he's basically down to the, to the 12. And among those 12, one of them is Judas. One of them is a wolf in sheep's clothing, is a poisonous snake. One of them is a traitor. So when we read this line, this verse 66, in the context of what's being talked about here, It's describing many people leaving, many true believers leaving, and they are leaving because of difficult teachings, a very difficult teaching that they could not and would not accept. And then it goes on to explain that there are 12, and of those 12, 
one is of the devil. This is showing us that in the end days, what's going to happen is there's going to be a great falling away. And we are told this in other scripture as well, that there's going to be this great falling away. Well, that's verified here, talking about believers who leave. And the reason is because of difficult teachings. And so what we are going to see in the end days, and what we are actually seeing, is that the difficult teachings aren't being taught. And where they are being taught, where difficult teachings are being taught, and sin is being condemned, and Jesus is being taught as being the only way, and that that includes following His commandments and His teachings, when pastors and preachers are, are saying that, we must live a particular lifestyle. We must live by the commandments of God. For Jesus taught the teachings of God. Jesus was God. And it is through God that we are taught. And we are told to obey His commandments. But today, that's too difficult of a teaching. These difficult teachings are not being taught. And where they are being taught, people are leaving. They are turning their back on these difficult teachings. So I believe it's significant and it's telling us that the Antichrist and the Beast aren't going to be associated with Islam but rather with Christianity. That's where the, the Antichrist and the Beast are coming from and this is affirmed in the second passage that I'm going to be reading from and that's in the Old Testament and it's uh, First Chronicles so I'm just going to read the passage itself. First Chronicles chapter 6, verse 66. The descendants of Kohath were given the following towns from the territory of Ephraim, each with its pasture lands. And then verse 67 goes on to explain the towns that it's talking about, where these descendants of Kohath went and lived. Now these descendants, Kohath is one of the sons of Levi. And this whole chapter is describing how the Levites are divided up among all the other tribes. And it's telling us where these particular Levites went and lived. Now the Levites are the priesthood of the nation of Israel. Levi represents the priesthood. So we have two passages in the Bible connected directly to the number 666. Chapter 6, verse 66, 666. Both of them had to do with believers, not non-believers. The one is actually describing the priesthood and where they were living. I believe this is telling us where, if not the beast himself, uh, the, at least the Antichrist, or one of the major Antichrists who will work with the beast are going to come from. It's going to come from the priesthood. It's going to come from this area that is spoken about here. And the things they are going to teach are going to cause believers to turn from the true Messiah. Difficult teachings will cause them to turn away from Messiah. And it will be teachings that tickle the ears that will have these people drawn to those teachings. Those people who leave the one true Christ and the true gospel will go to another Christ that is being taught another gospel. All right, uh, I hope I've been able to ex at least explain, get across what it is I'm talking about with these two passages and why I believe they are significant. I have also uh, created a playlist, a series of videos where I talk about uh, other passages in the Bible. I did this uh, about two and a half, three years ago. The playlist uh, has to do with uh, uh, passages, verses found in the Bible that are connected to the number 666. I look at verse 6, verse 600, verse 666, and that kind of thing. And through those passages, it also identifies who one of the major antichrists uh, were, someone who actually lived a, a few hundred years ago. If you are intrigued by that, perhaps uh, uh, you'll go to the... Uh, uh, the playlist and watch it. If not, uh, so be it. Just, uh, you know, leave a comment regarding uh, the things I've talked about in this video. 
So uh, till next time, peace and blessings.